Driving along the roadway, there are hundreds of images that help you find your way. Your job as a driver is to pick out the information that will help you arrive safely at your destination. You get much of this information in the form of traffic control signs, signals, and markings. Recognizing these signs, signals, and markings can give you advance notice of changes ahead, such as merges, reductions in speed, or upcoming intersections. Knowing what they mean allows you to anticipate and react to changing traffic conditions so you can drive more safely and smoothly. This video is based on the national standards that cover most traffic situations. However, each highway agency may create its own signs, signals, and markings to handle unique circumstances. This video will show you the underlying rules and logic behind traffic signs, signals, and markings, and why they are important to you. The streets themselves communicate with their painted messages called markings. There are two general rules about markings that tell you where you may and may not drive. The first rule is that white lines are on the right side of each traffic lane and yellow lines on the left. The second rule is that solid or unbroken lines show you where you may not pass or change lanes and dashed or broken lines permit you to pass or change lanes. For example, on a two-lane road, the solid white line to the right marks the edge of the roadway. The yellow line on the left separates you from oncoming traffic. A double solid yellow line on your left means that it is not legal for either you or oncoming traffic to pass. If there's a dashed and solid line together and the broken line is on your side of the road, you may pass traffic ahead of you if you can do so safely. However, opposing traffic is not allowed to cross the solid line. A dashed yellow line on the left means that both you and the opposing traffic may pass. If you decide to pass, be sure that you have enough room to pass safely. On multi-lane roads with medians, broken white lines usually separate the lanes going in the same direction. Solid yellow lines mark the left side of the road and solid white lines mark the right side. A single solid white line is intended to discourage but not prohibit you from changing lanes. However, in some states, crossing a single solid white line is illegal. These very short dashed white lines indicate a merge lane. You may need to make a lane change to continue straight ahead. Yellow warning signs also alert you. Short white lines like these guide you through large, complex intersections. In addition to lane markings, you'll often also see reflectors. Again, white marks the right edge and yellow the left. These are especially helpful at night or any time when it's hard to see the edges of the road. Shape and color play an important part in highway signs. It's practically impossible to read every sign, but you can use their colors and shapes to pick out those that are most important to you. Even if you can't read them from a distance, the shape and color give you some idea of their meaning. For example, both the shape and color of this sign tell you to stop. As a rule, the color red indicates stop or conveys a significant prohibition. Black and white signs are regulatory and state the law. They mark where the regulation goes into effect. For example, accelerating when you first see this regulatory sign violates the law. Wait until you've passed the sign to accelerate. Violating any regulatory or prohibition sign can get you into serious trouble. Yellow signs provide warnings. They alert you to curves, crossings, speed limit changes, slippery roads, and other conditions where a little warning goes a long way. Yellow warning signs might also appear before prohibition or regulatory signs to warn you of a change in the law or the need to take action. Look for yellow triangles or diamonds to anticipate what's ahead. An orange sign tells you you're in a construction zone. A symbol usually found on signs of another color or shape can sometimes show up on an orange sign. This conveys the same information, but with the additional warning to be extra cautious in the construction zone. Green signs tell you the distance or direction to cities, alternate routes, or other destination information. In the U.S., distances are shown in miles. 
In Canada and Mexico, on the other hand, distances and speed limits are measured in kilometers. If you're not familiar with metric conversion, 100 miles equals 160 kilometers, and 55 miles per hour is approximately equal to 90 kilometers per hour. Blue signs provide service-related information, such as where to find food, lodging, and gas. And brown signs tell you of a recreational facility, such as a park, campground, fishing site, or boat launch. As we mentioned before, orange signs indicate a construction zone. Look for black and white regulatory signs to state the law, but consider the orange signs a warning to be extra alert. Begin to slow down to the reduced speed limit before you enter the zone. Follow the directions of lane change arrows. Shoulder work ahead signs. Changeable message signs. And be alert for shoulder drop-offs and bump signs. There's more than one good reason to slow down in construction zones. Perhaps the most important reason to slow down is each year dozens of highway construction and maintenance workers die as a result of traffic collisions in construction zones. When the signs say slow down, slow down. And watch out for construction workers and vehicles near the roadway. Be cautious and obey posted signs. Conditions change rapidly in construction zones. Now let's look at some other regulatory and warning signs that convey special meanings or are frequently misunderstood. Let's start with curves. Slowing down to the advisory speed before entering the curve ensures that you'll navigate the curve safely and smoothly. A 90 degree arrow means the upcoming turn is sharp. The safe speed through the turn is 30 miles per hour or less. A curved arrow indicates a more shallow turn. However, you still may need to reduce your speed depending on weather conditions. Chevron alignment signs guide you through curves where the curve may be obscure. Follow the series of Chevron alignment signs to stay on the road. Several regulatory signs deserve special attention. Yield signs at entrance or exit ramps tell you to adjust your speed and look for a safe merging opportunity. Traffic on the highway and exiting vehicles have the right of way. Unless absolutely necessary, avoid stopping on the ramp. Restricted access lanes are marked with black and white regulatory signs containing a white diamond. There's usually a white diamond painted on the roadway as well. This sign indicates a restricted lane for specially designated vehicles. Do not enter a restricted access lane unless you qualify to be there. If you need to make a turn across such a lane in city traffic, enter at the last possible moment, a half block or less from the turn. HOV stands for High Occupancy Vehicles. Only vehicles with a required number of occupants may travel in HOV lanes. Signs will indicate the minimum number of occupants as well as the times when the restriction is in effect. HOV lanes may also have a diamond painted on the roadway. Shared turning lanes or two-way turning lanes allow you to make left turns from either direction without holding up traffic behind you. Enter these lanes as close to your intended turn as possible. Never use a shared turning lane as a through lane. And pay particular attention to signs and signals for reversible lanes. They tell you the correct direction of traffic and the time of day the direction changes. However, stay alert. Don't assume that the opposing drivers are paying attention. Now let's look at some unique situations that require special signs. For example, tunnels usually have specific traffic control signs such as minimum and maximum speeds prohibited cargo, and the appropriate use of headlights and sunglasses. The signs you see when approaching a toll plaza tell you how far away the plaza is, what the safe approach speed is, which lanes are for cars and which are for trucks, and other useful information. Finally, many railroad grade crossings have signs and traffic control devices that warn of an approaching train. If a railroad crossing does not have flashing lights and barricades, slow down and check for a train before crossing the tracks. Remember, it's difficult to accurately judge the speed of an oncoming train, and trains cannot slow down for you. For your own safety and the safety of others, it's important that you observe, understand, and follow all cautionary and restrictive signs when approaching a tunnel, toll plaza, or railroad grade crossing. These situations are well marked because there is very little room for error. 
Next, we're going to look at non-vehicular signs. Most of these signs refer to pedestrians and bicyclists. It's your responsibility to avoid them. Knowing the warning and regulatory signs will help you avoid a collision. Walk, don't walk signals tell pedestrians when it's permissible to cross. If you're turning into their path, you must yield to them. Pedestrians have the right of way in this situation. Stop at the vehicle stop line painted on the roadway to stay out of the way of pedestrians and other traffic turning into your street. Be prepared to stop for any pedestrian who enters a crosswalk. And learn to expect and to stop for pedestrians not in crosswalks. You could save a life. A warning sign is often placed ahead of the crosswalk so you have adequate warning of the crossing zone. Another warning sign is placed at the crosswalk itself. The lines on the sign indicate the location of the crosswalk markings. Whether you're in a residential neighborhood or at a busy intersection, be alert for inattentive pedestrians. Children are less predictable than adults. School zone signs tell you when to reduce your speed and when it's safe to increase it again. Wait to pass the end school zone or speed limit sign to resume your speed. Accelerating before you pass these signs is a violation and puts children and other pedestrians at risk. Finally, animal crossing signs tell you to slow down and look out. Animals behave unpredictably. For example, deer freeze when they see headlights. So be extra cautious when you see an animal crossing sign, especially at dawn or dusk when wild animals are more likely to be present. Some of the most important information you see on the road is the flashiest. Traffic signals control the flow of traffic at intersections. Throughout the United States, you may turn right at a red traffic signal after you have come to a complete stop, unless prohibited by a sign. As you turn right on red, watch out for pedestrians and oncoming traffic. They have the right of way. If a traffic signal turns yellow while you're approaching an intersection, stop before entering the intersection if you can do so safely without causing a rear-end collision. If you are already in the intersection when the signal turns yellow, keep going. It's not safe to accelerate to get through an intersection before the signal turns from yellow to red. Other traffic may not see you in time to avoid a collision. But what about flashing signal lights? A flashing yellow light means that you need to slow down and proceed through the intersection with caution. Keep in mind that cross traffic may not stop even though they are supposed to. Regard a flashing red light as a stop sign. Stop at the intersection and wait until there is an adequate break in traffic before entering the intersection. If the light is flashing red on all sides, treat it as an all-way stop sign. If two or more drivers arrive simultaneously at an all-way stop sign, the driver to your right has the right of way. If possible, maintain eye contact with the other driver, particularly when proceeding through the intersection. If the intersection has no signs or the traffic control signal is not working, treat it as an always stop. Some traffic signals tell you when you may proceed in a specific direction. For example, if there is a red arrow or red light on the signal controlling your lane, you must stop even though traffic traveling in the same direction in the next lane has a green signal. A green arrow on the signal shows when opposing traffic is not allowed to cross your path. If the arrow goes off and no red light or red arrow appears, you may still turn left, but you must now yield to opposing traffic. Look for a safe opening to make your turn. Be sure that the light is still green when you move into the intersection, but if the light turns yellow while you're in the intersection, you're allowed to finish making your turn. Finally, if a police officer or crossing guard is present, their directions overrule the traffic signal. These general guidelines about traffic signals are always subject to local laws. It's always nice to know where you're going, and if you understand how routes are numbered and marked, you'll always be in the right lane at the right time. Route signs mark federal interstates and other roadways, state highways, and county or municipal roadways. The interstate system uses a shield symbol that is blue on the bottom with a red band across the top like this. The primary route number is either a single or double digit number. North-south routes have odd numbers. 
East-West routes have even numbers. Spurs and loops extend from a primary interstate. A spur is a short route that connects with the primary route at only one end. It has a three-digit number that begins with an odd number. A loop is a route that meets the primary route at both ends. Its three-digit route number begins with an even number. Loops usually bypass cities or congested areas. U.S. routes that are not part of the interstate system have signs like this. The numbering system, however, is similar, odd for north-south routes and even for east-west routes. State, county, and municipal roadways use numbering systems similar to federal routes. However, the shape and color of route signs vary among states, counties, and municipalities. On limited access highways and some other roadways, exit signs are placed before the exit. On rural roads, these are at least one mile ahead. These signs give you plenty of warning so you know what's ahead. Route signs are also placed just after the entrance to a roadway. They help you orient yourself and provide confirmation that you're on the right road. Milepost markers tell you your position on the route. They are located every mile along many major routes. These markers tell you the distance from the beginning of the route starting at the south or west state line or from the junction at which the route begins. Use these mile markers if you need to call for help. Many police and emergency services monitor channel 9 on the citizens band frequency and special cellular phone numbers. Understanding the signs, signals and markings that you see as you drive will help make your trip safer and easier. And remember to stay alert, pay attention, watch out for the other person and always wear your safety belts.